Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Borky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, let's find this gentleman, Mr. Darren is called, Darren. Let's have a look, here we go. There we go, Darren. How are you doing, Darren? Yeah, I'm all right, Porky. Yourself? Yeah, you're live on Porky's Corner. Well, we're not live on the channel, but you're live on filming it, so. Okay, mate. No all good stuff. So, where are you from, Darren? Well, I'm originally down south, mate. South uh, East Croydon, that area. Yeah. Uh, but I now um, live up in Nottingham. You live, so, you yeah, live up, up in Nottingham, eh? I'm in the Nottingham, not far from your mates, and. Uh, the Cobra, so yeah, lived up here about 10 years now, mate. Um, yeah? So yeah, yeah, all good, mate. Good. Uh, so you're a big boxing fan then, yeah? Yeah, I followed it all my life, really. I must that when I was a kid got me into it. And uh, So yeah, I mean, I'm in my 40s, so Ben Eubank and Watson and what have you uh, on ITV. Um, that, was, that was about the only boxing on at that time, wasn't it? Um, yeah. I used to watch that on the highlights of the evening. Um, and then, you probably won't like it, but big Cal Zaggy fan. Um, Ooh. I've obviously a few times as well, so I used to love watching Cal Zaggy. Um, and then, yeah, obviously used to watch the uh, stuff in America, like Tyson and whatever, through the 80s and 90s. So, yeah, yeah, always followed it, mate, yeah. Go on, I believe you've got some questions for me, haven't you? I've done some good questions for you, I think, yeah? Come on then, well, fire away. You've got uh, 45... You've got 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> All right? right Come on no then. Worries. Right, first um, one, Porky, really is around the Sky um, and matchroom situation. Um, obviously, looks like their contract potentially is coming to the end. If you... And, and with zone and Hearns links with them, do you think if Sky and Matt have did part ways, who do you think Sky might look to to bring in? Do you think they might look to a few different promoters and give them different slots on there going forward so it's a bit more variety? You mean when Eddie Earns' deal ends next year? Yeah, and if so, so if so is Sky and Matt have parted ways then and Sky look to go, well, we're not going to just go with one promoter. Who do you think might come into the fold in terms of our promoters? I think they'll just work with MTK myself. Yeah. I think they'll give them exclusive rights. And MTK will obviously work with some of Eddie's fighters and some of Frank's, but I think they'll they'll jump with MTK. That's why they've got Macklin on as a full time Sky pundit, aren't they now? Yeah, so they have I think they'll they'll keep that going and that's probably a good thing really. Uh it's better than this what we've got at the moment because what they've been serving up match up in the last few years has been it's been awful on it i mean the the pay-per-views have been saturday night fights and the saturday night fights should really be they're not they're no better than what we've been putting on no, most yeah, of them definitely dropped us so, yeah 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 i was i thought mtk i mean they look strong didn't they a lot of people are going with them now 250 <laughs> fighters aren't they and they all get paid on time so if you're getting paid on time and they've got a lot of fighters and good fighters as well, why yeah. why would Sky want to go work with other promoters when they can just work with MTK? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, mate. Definitely yeah. good stuff. Um, so I'm gonna mix these questions up a lot. Next one is regarding cruiserweight situation in terms of that weight limit. I think that's a big problem because you've got your light heavy is twelve seven. And then you've got a huge jump up to the cruise. Twenty-five pound. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And you've got you've got certain fighters that weight drain themselves to get down to light heavy, mm. and others fight the cruiser that they're, they're not big enough. Like remember the Chamberlain the Coley fight. That well, I've cool. got yeah, I've got a solution to that. Go on. Right, light heavyweight it's one seven five, isn't it? Yeah. Right, cruiserweight it's two hundred pound, isn't it? Why don't we call the two? Why don't we call? Why don't we have a cruiser, super cruiser at two ten, cruiser at two hundred, and why don't we have a one ninety light cruiser? Yeah. So you've got light cruiser and super, a bit like 
Super middleweight. Light middleweight. Middle. Super middle. Yeah. Welterweight. Light welter. Welter. Super welter. Do you see where I'm coming from? Definitely. Then what you've got then, you've got fighters who can think to themselves, well, I'm not really a 200 pound fighter, I'm really a 190er. So, and then your 200 pounders are coming in at 215, aren't they? After the 36 hour, you know, filling out period, after it weighing. So that, that, that is a problem for me. But when I mentioned it for IFL to read out a couple of years ago in an Eddie Earn interview, Eddie Earn dismissed it. He went like, just like that. But yet, what it will take is somebody to die in the ring over weight dehydration or something like that, then they'll look at it. But till then, nothing will happen. Because I look at someone like a Coley, who I don't think that's, that is that good, but he's just huge for the weight. Yeah. So he's in the ring, he's probably 16 stone. And he's fighting someone like Chamberlain, who's as good as him, but he was just too big for him. And he's yeah. just wrapping his arms around him. It just doesn't seem, uh, it just seems to me, some, I put on my notes, like, what about something around 35, some sort of weight around there, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, put it in the mix. Good stuff. Okay, uh, next one we've got for you is regarding uh, Daniel Dubois. Um, obviously, massive talent. I know he's got Joe Joyce next, which is going to be a tough fight, no doubt. I think, he'll win, I think he wins that, and I think he'll stop it. But if he did that, if you were in charge of him, where would you go next with him? His next couple of fights? With Daniel Dubois? Mm. If he beats Joyce? Do you think he does? Uh, yeah, I think he does. I think mm. Joe Joyce is there to be beat now. He's an old bloke now, Joe, isn't he? Yeah, 35 or something. 34, 4, 35. Uh, Daniel, is it for a European title? I think it is a European, yeah. I mean, they've been talking for Dubois of going for Wilder and things like that. And I think that's a bit, you know, if he beat him, if he no. beat Joyce, I don't think that's a bit too soon. But I'm just wondering where you'd go with him if, if he did beat Joyce. Would you try and beat Wilder or? No, soon? I'd stay away from Wilder because if Wilder clips him and he hits him and goes down, uh, he might never be the same fighter again. He might have another David Price job on your hands. So I think that they should fight Joyce, beat Joyce, and then consolidate at that level. Yeah. yeah and maybe wait for one at belts to come become vacant or something like that. Frank will navigate him away through WBO, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's, well, he's, he's uh, Warren's sort of right-hand man, isn't he now? Him and, uh, I suppose, Yard is still. Yeah. Got some potential, but good stuff. Um, next one. So, if you were a manager and you had a top 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 prospect in the country, yeah, um, and you had to pick a trainer for him, now I want you to pick two. Give me a trainer down south who you'd go with, but also one up north. Two trainers that you'd pick if you had a top prospect and you had to guide him and get get the right trainer for him. Who would you go with? Mark Tibbs down south. Yeah. Mark uh, Re React Porte and. Harvey Horn and Dylan White, they're all undefeated yeah. with Mark Tibbs, aren't they? What, you got their 30 odd fights or something? Uh, Mark Tibbs down south and up north. Uh, I like Richard Towers, but he, he's, he's, uh, he's only had a couple of fights as a trainer. Yeah. Uh, up north, I would go for. It's a tough one. Mick Whale will not take anybody on because he's got Josh. Uh, I'd like to see Robin Reed have a crack at it, but he's not bothered about boxing. Uh, he does pad seminars though, so I'd like to see maybe Peter Fury. I don't know. Yeah. Chris Smedley have another go at it. Which uh, I, I had Fury for North, and I had Shane McGuigan for it south. But Shane yeah, McGuigan. Oh yeah, I forgot about Shane, but he, he's too I, busy in his Shane. I think he, yeah, he is to be fair. But yeah, yeah, good shots. Um, Okay, mate. Next one is regarding Fury and AJ, and obviously next year, if it does happen, uh, these one, two fights, wherever it's going to be. Obviously, everyone pretty much knows it's not going to be in this country, and that's just down to money, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Um, if we had a scenario where BT and Sky said, "Okay, we'll keep it in England, but we're going to make the pay per view forty pound." Would you agree with that to keep it in this country? Yeah, I would. Yeah. 
for the simple reason Joshua has just come out and he's going on about where people should spend the money in certain shops and that and I'm not gonna go too deep on it. But he but he took the Saudi money, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So I think it was a bit rich coming from him. Tyson Fury will go where money is. Why should he care after how the country treated him after he beat Vladimir? But if you put me on the spot and say, should it stay in England and should we pay fifty quid pay per view and it'd be a rate good do have to put good fights on? You'd say yeah, yeah you'd say yes please, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think that and I think that might be the solution. You know, it's a one off, isn't it, in terms of yeah. the size of a fight. And if they put enough money on it, people will still pay it, won't they, at the end of the yeah, day? Yeah, they'll pay they'll, what they'll do, instead of paying twenty five quid, people will get people round to their house and get everybody to chip in, won't they? Exactly. see that because no I wouldn't want to see that because you get fighters coasting after they won seven rounds and just running knowing that they've got it in yeah. bank so no I wouldn't want to see it that's the other side yeah yeah that's true yeah okay no, that's fair it's the not knowing it's the not knowing what's going to happen it'd take yeah. all that away wouldn't it all the anticipation and that's just my opinion I could be wrong yeah sure um, do you have a bet on the boxing yeah I do yeah I'm not going to say what, what, what my uh, best bet was because it could get somebody in trouble. It wasn't a bent fight though, but uh, the worst what, the worst one, I had an accumulator. Right? People say, oh, that's pokey, that's why you don't like Bellew. Tony Bellew against Cleverly won an accumulator, right? The, the rematch. That one cost me 2,200 quid. Bellew against... When he won the title, the kid who dropped him and then he got up and dropped him, didn't he? Macabo. Yeah. That cost me two and a half grand, that one accumulator. Uh, well, and two more fun. accumulators yeah. on the hay fights. I lost 1800 quid, 1700 quid on them. Well, the main one was three grand on the Usek one. I backed Bellew. <laughs> Because the odds were good and it were in my bet. But I always thought if Usek wins, if Usek wins, I'm not so bothered anyway. And I weren't, but I do think about it. But Usek obviously beat him, but he was in my bet. But I, had, I just had the feeling that Usek would be too much for him. So you could say, then, they're, they're obviously, but Bellew shafted me on every one, didn't he? But, uh, he's involved in every one. Well, they reckon Macabre was uh, injured before that. That fight yeah, he's a small guy as well, Macabre, one out nine. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, it's uh, good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just going to
and look for some you know, some new talent because as I say he's done three in East Midlands recently and they look like they all sell tickets so I'm hoping there's more fights around this way but do you think that's a good idea in looking to come to some different areas maybe? Where's he from again? Nottingham? No, yeah he signed a lad from Nottingham and then he signed a lad from Stoke Nathan Heaney um, Yeah well Bill, he could do his signing people who are between Nottingham and Stoke and getting a, a, a foothold in yeah. a certain area couldn't he? Yeah, I'm just wondering if he's going to come away a bit because of, you know, he's, a lot of his shows don't sell well, do they? I mean, I, I, I've gone to the MEN a couple of times in a few years ago and watched that Billy Joe against Andy Lee, um, you know, Lee Smith, well there. And there, was probably, there was probably two, three, what, maybe three or four thousand in there? You know, are. A couple world title fights. You know, it's, uh, I'm just wondering if he's going to look at some different areas, you know. Uh, I, ju I just, I just think that uh, if you're going to be a promoter, you've got to sign kids. Like I always used to say this to Dennis, you've got a Tommy Frank. Now we're going to need somebody else. Why don't we sign Josh Wales? So you've got Sheffield Barnsley. Then we need a Donny kid. Then you need a Rotherham kid, and then you can get them all to merge. And you can that's how you, that's how you sell out shows, isn't it? Yeah. But it doesn't always work like that because everybody's schedules are different, aren't they? But, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, but um, yeah, I mean, there's certainly a couple of lads around there that look decent, so it's going to be interesting because you don't, you don't get many shows in Nottingham, really. Um, Matt's going to put one on, but um, it'll be interesting he starts doing stuff up there, maybe. Um, yeah, next one was really re regarding Dennis, actually. I know you've got ties and links to yeah. um, You know, there's, I think there's good opportunities now for promoters, um, things, a lot of things are up in the air. Is he going to sort of push forward there? Did you say he's got a deal with Eurosport and what have you? Well, he did have a couple of months ago. I don't know what's happened since with his pandemic, but I'm, I'm assuming that he'll still be working with Eurosport and BBC Eye Player. Yeah, so that's quite positive. Do you think he's going to kick on? Because he's, he's, he's signed some good uh, titles, isn't he? Cash out and you've got a few others there. But like you say, he needs a few more, doesn't he? To to kick it off, maybe. Yeah, he needs uh, Dennis needs signings, mate. Mm. In my opinion, he needs he needs some new signings. I've told him that, but you know we're in the middle of a, a crisis, aren't we, at the moment? Yes. So it's a bit it's a bit bad, like in it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's not. Easy. But. Uh, well, you're right, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just stood behind camera getting dressed here because I'm going to after I've done done here with you, I'm going to visit. Uh, prison to put some magazine, buy some. Ma I pay my mates uh, Daily Mirror, Daily Mirror in the morning, uh, Sunday Mirror on a Sunday, load of magazine FHM. He's give me a list here load of magazine FHM, Razzle, Park Lane, Mayfair. They're dirty magazines, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So I'm, I'm gonna go, go, go there and uh, I'm gonna sort a VO out as well because I don't know what's happening with the with the, the prison visits and that because it's all a bit up in air at the moment. Yeah, everything is at the moment. It really is. Um, yeah, next one, where it's really regarding all this with the, the issues with the coronavirus and everything else. You, you mentioned something to your channel the other day with Dave Allen and Hugh and Fury. I mean, that fight is a very simple fight. It should have been made, and it would be a good domestic fight. And I, I was thinking after all this, the problems of this virus and the lockdown, we'll, we'll get to see them sort of fights. They'll just, all the promoters are saying, you know, there's no warm up fights. These are the fights that have got to be made. But straight away, we're seeing Dave Allen looking, wait, he's just breathing, isn't he? He turned down a fortune for his bar. He's turned down this for Hugh Fury. Do you think we're going to actually see? These fights that made all the same before. Uh, I don't know, you know. Uh, I think Dave Allen's got to the stage now where he, he, he just wants to. Uh, I think Dave Allen just wants to earn a few quid. I don't think he's bothered about belts because he hasn't won a belt yet, has he? But if he can dine out on his name and being a bit of a mini celebrity, good good luck, good luck to it, good luck to him, innit? It's an hard game, innit? And don't forget, he's had some good hidings, David. He's had some dark moments, so he deserves pain, doesn't he? I know what you're 
saying, but the way I see it with the Huey Fury fight, he's he's probably going to lose on points, but I doubt he's going to get a good eye on him. So you'd think he'd take that fight. Um, you know, Dubois, he could get <laughs> seriously hurt on that one. So if you get that one, with Huey Fury, I would have thought it would be a fight he'd have took. I'm sure the money was decent. Just surprises me, you know. I don't see where else someone like him would go. Well, you don't see where David go. Yeah, by turning the fight down like that, where else are you? Where else are you going to go then? You know, what's your ambition really? Well, I don't. He hadn't turned the Huey Fury the fight down, David. He's just asked for good money, hasn't he? But was it too much money, and it's not going to get? Well, it looks that way. It looks that way because there's going to be no ticket sale that night, is there? No. So, and I, 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 they've probably said, "Look, we can't can't pay you what you want." And that's just yeah. boxing, isn't it? That's just how it goes. Well, didn't Frank Warren say there's there's two ways of not having the fight? Not what? Turn it down. So Frank Warren says there's two ways of not 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 having a fight, isn't there? Turn it down or ask for too much money. <laughs> well, that's what that's what people do. They ask for they they want paying, don't they? It's a sport, isn't it? Where yeah, people want paying good, don't they? If you can get if you can push boat out and get paid, you're going to do that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, maybe he's not too fast. That's, that's how I looked at it. Yeah. Um, right. Next one is around jo Joshua with this injury. Um, you are. I don't know, he just suddenly seems to have come up out about. He's probably on crutches. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit suspicious myself with it. Obviously, he's got mandatories that we that it would be due. Do you think that Sky and, and himself and her and petrified of him losing before this Fury fight and do you think they just they just want to be trying to hold out for that um, yeah and, I think so I don't think right that Joshua's hurt his leg I think they might be going for an exemption with with pool left fight yeah that's what I think yeah it's just the Fury fight so much money involved isn't it and, and, and don't forget a a unification supersedes a mandatory so they're playing the game with that whether they can do that with the WBO I don't know uh, there's a lot of obstacles isn't there and, and, and I think that Eddie Hearns jumped the gun saying that the fight's made and I think there's a lot of obstacles yeah yeah it's a strange one him announcing I mean he used to criticise everyone else for announcing things too early yeah. and he's kind of got to have done that but mm. um, Maybe it was uh, after the bad publicity of the weekend. He, Maybe. Uh, wanted to throw something out there, you know? Uh, Maybe. What do you think will happen with Dylan White? Do you think he'll get, get, get a fight with Fury before it all? Do I think Dillian White will fight Fury? Uh, no. No, do I? No. I don't think he'll. F I don't know. Not next. I don't think he's got Wilder. Only Tyson's got to fight Wilder yeah. and get him out of the way. And then and obviously, the well, it's, this is easy. This is why they shouldn't be making announcements like that. But they're doing it to keep the fans interested, aren't they? Keep them talking because boxing. Who should say it's even going to start next month? I know. So we don't yeah, know, do we? Yeah, I mean, especially for the crowds and things like that. Yeah. Uh, what else was this? Just really one for you, really, on your channel. I mean, I watch your channel a lot. I like it, like the content. Don't always agree with everything, but that's boxing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, who, who, who that you haven't had on your channel yet, boxer wise or? Who oh, want I add on? Yeah. Who, who would you like to have on that you, that you haven't? I'm not really bothered about having anybody on channel, to be honest. If they come on, they come on. If they don't, I don't lose any sleep over it. Uh, I like legends, don't I? It were great to have Jimmy Tibbs on. That were a nice that day. Was good. That were good for me to go to London. Uh, I've had Peter Fury on the channel. Uh, people that have done stuff in the game. I think there's a lot of people nowadays that are trying to make themselves famous on social media. And they haven't really, they haven't really done much. But they're, they're people that I respect. I don't respect people that are hanging out at back of people. I, I, pre I prefer stand up, stand up characters. That's what I like. Uh, if people don't like that, don't come in my company. So that's what I say. Yeah. Uh, the Richard Towers interview was brilliant. Yeah, he's a good interviewer, Richard. He don't put me any nonsense. If anybody's got a problem, that's an interesting guy. 
<laughs> yeah, if anybody's got a problem with what Richard says on my channel, I'll go tell him and see what happens. Yeah, brilliant, that was really, really good. I love, mm. love that. Interesting guy, especially being around Klitschko and all of that. What yeah, Richard's done it all, hasn't he? He's uh, won a minor yeah. European belt. He's, he, he finished his career 16 and 1. Kiddo beat him, went on to win a world title. So, you know, he's, he's been in mix and he, he's, he's done all right at a job. He's training now and he does all the stuff with Dennis behind the scenes. So, he's yeah. doing all right. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, that's about all the. Uh, Is that it? All right, then, mate. Yeah. No problem. Brilliant. Uh, listen, Darren, it was great to have you on. Yeah, brilliant. Great to have you on, and you're welcome on anytime you want, and your questions yeah, are really yeah. good. Yeah, it'd be good to talk to you. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks a lot, Paul. Good no good. problem. Listen, you take care, and all the best to you and your family. And you, mate. Take yeah. care. Bye bye. Well, that was Darren uh, Brady from where did he say we're from Nottingham uh, I think he lives I think he lives near the Cobra so well, that's about it really I'm off to uh, to paper shop near Lindholm to pay me my, my pal's papers I wonder when they're going to be allowed visits so I haven't seen him for a bit but I think it's due in a couple of days I'll pay it today anyway while I'm going down that way it's not far, is it, Hatfield? Uh, that's about it. Uh, that was Darren's story. So, oh. Mayfair and Razzle. He'll be busy tonight, and then when he gets there, no, he'll get him tomorrow morning if I pay it today. He'll put him under his door tomorrow. He'll have a busy weekend, won't he? Folks, you both. So I think that's about it, really. Uh, good interview with Big V. Good one with Darren. I done the Dillian White thing. So there's content, enough content there for Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, could do Big V Saturday. Do Darren's. I put Darren's out for tomorrow. Big V's out for Sunday. And that's about it. I'll shut the factory up now. See, it's Friday and it's porky time. Been a long week. So thanks for listening this week. We've done really good numbers this week on the channel. I hope we've achieved what we've set out to achieve. I hope you're all happy. And uh, all right, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares. All right, don't have nightmares. Oh, what's said on a boxing channel. Shout out to Dean White as well. Pick up the phone, Dean. Pick up the phone. Email me. PokyCorner at mail.com. We'll have you on the channel. Alright, you'll get your chance. You want to go on everybody else's channel. Come on my channel. I've got some questions for you, Dean. Make sure when you come on that you bring your birth certificate. Send me an email a copy of it. Send me a copy of your birth certificate, Dean. Alright. Peace out. <laughs>